Do you guys love a good meat and cheese tray? I know I do. Today we're gonna build this cool serving board with epoxy infill so you can serve up your favorite tasty treat. Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of Homebow Workshop. My name is Jeff, and welcome to my workshop. Well, the holidays are fast approaching, and in a recent episode of my weekly live stream, we were brainstorming a bunch of different handmade gift ideas. We had a ton of great suggestions for a wide variety of things, like handmade kitchen utensils, handmade wooden bowls and trays, cutting boards, coasters, and a ton of other things. One project that I have made before, but I don't think we've ever done a video on it, is a serving tray, or what some people call a charcuterie board. I can't ever say that right, but we're gonna make one of those in this episode. I have this piece of elm right here that I milled a couple years ago that I think has just the perfect shape to make a nice little board. This end of the piece is really not gonna be usable, but down here, I think this has about a perfect shape here that we can make some sort of a handle out of this right here. We can fill this in, sand this all down really nice. I think it's gonna work really good. I think our first order of business is going to be to fill in this cracked and split area, but if we flip it over, the crack kind of goes at an angle all the way through. So we need to seal this off first. Before I can apply some tape to seal the cracks, I need to make sure that the cracks are empty and free from dust. I'll just use a little bit of compressed air to blow all the dirt out of the cracks. I'm gonna use some house wrap tape to seal up the cracks. My experience has been that this works pretty good, but I always seem to have a leak. So this time I'm gonna try something I haven't tried before. I'm gonna use a J roller to really seal that tape against the wood. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we're about to find out. I'm gonna add some blue pigment to some two-part epoxy and mix that up really good. I'll use a stick to help drizzle the epoxy down into the cracks. Once I have all of the voids filled, I'm just gonna use a heat gun passed lightly over the epoxy. This is gonna help draw out the air bubbles so that hopefully when it's cured, we don't have any bubbles in there. Alternatively, you can also use a blowtorch, but at this moment, my blowtorch is busted, so heat gun it is. You wanna be very careful at this point not to overheat the epoxy. If you do, it can cause it to start to cure right away and you won't end up with a good finish. Ask me how I know that. Another thing that I've found too while heating the epoxy is not only does it draw out air bubbles, it almost seems like it thins it out and it runs down into the cracks better. So as you heat it up, you'll have to stop and add more epoxy to make sure the cracks stay full. I'm gonna continue to fill this in as the epoxy soaks down in, remove the air bubbles with the heat gun until it doesn't soak up anymore, and then we're gonna let this dry. And of course, why would this epoxy project be any different than the other ones I've done? <laughs> Every time I try to do something with epoxy, it spills everywhere. <laughs> Never fails. If you guys have been following my channel for a little while, you've definitely seen some videos where we've had some epoxy mishaps. In fact, if you remember in an earlier video, this little gouge right here, that's from some epoxy. Hold please while I clean up a small mess. I think we're gonna have to sand that off. After trimming off a little bit of the excess wood that I knew I wasn't going to use, I then sent the piece to the drum sander to flatten both the top and the bottom. This not only flattened the piece out really nice, but it also removed a ton of that extra epoxy that would have taken a long time to do by hand. After sending it through the drum sander with some 40 grit sandpaper on the drum, it's looking pretty good. It's still pretty rough yet, but I'm not gonna go any finer because I can see there's a couple of little bubbles and some voids in here that I need to fill. And I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more of that blue epoxy. Once that's dry, I'm gonna send it back to the drum sander, but I'm gonna spare you those details because it's gonna look like pretty much the same thing I just did. So I'll meet you right back here once I take care of these voids and we're ready for the next step. 
After spending a couple of days of filling pinholes, letting it dry, sanding it down, filling more pinholes on both the front and the back, I've got this filled in really well. Now we just need to get a shape drawn out on here for a handle. For the handle shape, I'm not really doing anything fancy. I'm just sketching on some lines, making a few straight lines, and using some random things around the shop to get the shapes that I want. Next, it's over to the bandsaw to cut out the handle. After sanding everything down to get it nice and smooth, I'm going to put a small round over on all of the square edges. This is just going to make it a little bit more comfortable to hold. I also drilled a hole in the handle that can be used for hanging this board up when it's not in use. And I used that same router bit to very, very carefully round the edges of that hole. Due to the shape of the wood, there was a couple areas that I rounded over that didn't blend in as well, so I just cleaned that up with a little bit more sanding. Well, now we've got the thing sanded down. I think in order to finish this up, all we need to do is apply a finish. For this, I'm just gonna keep it super simple, treat it very similar to a cutting board. Just gonna apply a good coat of mineral oil. Call it good. Let's do this. love the kind of chocolatey brown color that this elm turns when you put an oil finish on there. So cool. Really makes that epoxy pop. We're just going to set this aside for a little while, let that oil soak in, and we'll wrap this thing up. After letting the oil soak in for a few hours, I just used a clean rag to wipe off any excess oil. And with that, our serving board, meat and cheese tray, whatever you want to call this thing, is done, ready for the holidays. These things are an awesome project, and the sky's the limit as far as the design. You get creative with it, have some fun, and let me know down in the comments, what would you prefer to load this thing up with? I think for me, I'm gonna go with meat and cheese and crackers. That's my personal favorite. Let me know yours. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Am I the only one who can't stand the feel of epoxy on their hands? Probably should be using some gloves. This ought to be fun. Hello? Oh, Michael from the dealer services.